This is the Whistler Mountain Bike Park. It is the premier lift access downhill bike park in the world with 4,900 vertical feet of descending trails that include miles and miles of the very best natural terrain in North America, if not this entire planet. At its base, where the village meets the mountain, is a course that is unrivaled in its scale and size, flanked by 25,000 rabid fans who are here to behold the world's top riders drop into the very best slope style event on the planet. This is Joyride at Crankworks Whistler, and you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. <laughs> Everybody, Sal Masekela here, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series, and allow me to welcome you to one of my favorite places on this earth, just north of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, located in the picturesque Fitzsimmons Mountain Range. This is Whistler Mountain Resort, both a winter and summer playground that offers world-class skiing and snowboarding in the winter, but then in the summer, the slopes turn into one of the premier mountain bike parks in the world. That is why this is the best setting for the very best slope style event on the planet, Joyride. The final stop of the very first triple crown of mountain bike slope style. This year, the Crankworks World Tour decided to expand to three stops, starting in Rotorua, New Zealand, then traveling to Les Deux Alpes in France, and this week culminating in its Canadian home base of Whistler, BC. 10 days of mountain biking culture and competition that crests with Joyride, the biggest event not only of this week, but really of the entire tour. The buzz this week, it's about Brett Reeder and his quest to win his first ever Triple Crown. But no one will discount the hometown hero and three-time winner of this event, Brandon Semenuk. He would like nothing more than to upset his fellow Canadian from reaching his goal. We're set for the finals, so we're going to check in and do some riding. Todd Harris and Cam McCall. Thank you very much, Sal. An absolute beautiful day here in British Columbia, just north of the border. The course is perfect once again, and 25,000 fans plus have turned out to watch the very best. It'll be the best of two run format, and we will have a reverse order run for the second run. Remember, it's all scored out of 100, 100 being the perfect score. Cam McCall, what are the judges looking for? These guys make their way down this absolutely beautiful course. Yeah, Todd, the judges are looking at these riders under a microscope out here today. It's the Super Bowl of the sport, so you gotta have a perfect run. Of course, they're looking at amplitude, how high you go, the space between the top of the lip and where you and your bike are, trick difficulty, the maneuvers that you choose to do while you're in the air, variety, you gotta do different tricks, you can't just repeat the same thing over and over again, execution, how smooth it looks, how easily you get back to those pedals into the next jump, course use, progression, and of course, my favorite criteria, the risk taking, how gnarly you're willing to get. We have got the absolute best here, the culmination of the sport this weekend in Canada. Before we get to the action, we want to check in now with the fourth member of our broadcast team here in Canada. Here is Tina Dixon for a report on the conditions here in British Columbia. Right now, I'm standing about midway on this course, and as I'm looking around, there are 13 trickable features. That is the most we have ever seen at a Crankworks, and it's not just the number that is impressive, it's also the size of the jumps that have people talking. Now, keep in mind, we did have a lot of rain earlier, and in a way, it changes the consistency of the sand. So these riders may have to adjust their speeds throughout the day, and that's just an extra element for these guys to think about. But guys, it is anyone's game today, and it is gonna come down to who can trick all 13 of these features the best guys 
All right, thank you very much, Tina. 13, a huge number. And the man that's going to start us off in the competition today is 19-year-old Tom Van Steenbergen out of BC. Now, it's tough to go first in the competition, Cam, but now he gets to go out and set the bar. Well, luckily, we've got the right man for the job. This is a very well-rounded rider. He's got background in racing, and he's also a guy who's got a ton of tricks, and he's not afraid to do them on the most difficult of features. All right, he is set to go. Remember, it's two runs. We only keep your best score, and it's based on 1 to 100. Give us a prediction, Cam. Do you think he comes out hot right away, or do you think he tries to set maybe a nice, mellow pace? Well, if I know Tom Van Steenberg, and I know that he comes out swinging, and this is the biggest stage of the sport, he's going to be thrown down. There we go. He starts out off mm. the start tower with a 360, going to the tuck no hander to toboggan combo, getting the hands off and one of them being on the seat. 360 downside tail up on that step up jump. He's off to a great start. Now he's coming into this four pack section, a back flip tuck no hander, right into a huge front flip, landing right on the landing where he needed to be carrying the right speed. Now he's into this cannon feature. He's got a suicide no hander off of the cannon. Tail upping the transfer coming off the left side takeoff into the right side landing. Here he is into the cabin, a back flip up. What does he have off? A front flip. Oh! And Tom Van Steenbergen goes down. He was so close to finishing and making it a full pull, and that is a heavy, heavy fall. Well, Tom Van Steenbergen is one of the best in the world at front flips. You see him right here front flipping the second jump in the four pack section and landing so smooth. One thing about a front flip, is that it's easy to initiate the rotation, but it's so hard to slow it down in time for the landing. You see him coming off of this drop. Way more difficult to front flip a drop than a jump. And see, he's just a little bit over-rotating and all that forward momentum, it's hard to slow it, and his hand falls off the handlebars. The next thing to hit is his body. So Tom goes down hard. It looks like he's going to be okay. Good thing he's rocking the full face helmet. There you see he's cracked the visor. His first run score will be a 33. Tom Van Steenbergen has the world record for longest front flip, so we knew he had that in his bag and he's not afraid. It's a blessing and a curse having that trick because if you land it, it's worth great points, but it's so easy to crash. This is Greg Watts, a champion in 2009, and the 28-year-old is back for more. And Cam, I guess the big question is, as Watts gets ready to roll off, how much has this competition and course changed since he won the whole thing? It's true. The progression curve of this sport has just gone up so steeply in the last six years since he won, so it's tough to be able to stay on top of this sport. Does he have what it takes to do it again? We're about to find out. He starts off with a 360 off the start drop and a Superman seat grab, getting good variety so far on this course. 360 suicide no-hander on that step up. That's a Greg Watts original. He's got a lot of creative tricks you don't see other guys doing. A lot of those upside down suicide tricks, spinning suicide tricks where you have to utilize that front brake. One of the only guys out there who uses the front brake still. So this is a two-run format. We keep your best score. Do you think he's going to lay down something maybe a little more conservative than go for it on run two? Well, everybody calls him the PlayStation. He is so <laughs> precise and he packs so many different tricks into a run that you won't see from other guys. So I think this is strategy right now. We're seeing the combos like that 360 X up off that drop. So he's filling in a trick on every feature and doing it with variety. Here it is, the final feature of his run. All right, he's got a bar spin into the whale tail and a back foot, getting a smooth run in the bag for Greg Watts. So Watts is clean from start to finish. The man that won this competition back in 2009, looking pretty good on run number one. Maybe not a lot of sizzle here, Cam, but it was a solid run. Well, a guy who's done it before, he's won this contest. It's the biggest stage in the entire sport, so he knows the strategy. With that two-run format, you know you kind of got to make sure you get to the bottom. There's no better feeling than making it into that finished crowd, and then he can really put on the sauce in the second run. All right, so the Californian checks in with a 68.60, and still one more run to go. While we have a break, let's check in with a legend of the sport, Darren Bearcloth, for our course preview. All right, my name is Darren Bearcloth. I'm here with Justin and Dustin, two of the uh, Red Bull Joyride course builders. And uh, we're going to give you a uh, GoPro course preview of the 2015 Red Bull Joyride course. Come check it out. All right, here it is, Red Bull Joyride course. Starting on the first roll-in, this is where it all begins. Nice mellow uh, start, driving a little pedal off the first drop, onto the up box, nice little boost into the first jump. Yeah, lots of tricks to be going thrown down here. Into the uh, whale fin jump, into the first jump, into the second jump. 
Here it is. Lots of jumps being thrown down on this first and second. Coming in berm off the cannon log. Nice little boost. Coming in the first hit. Nice. Pulling into the cabin. Got a good little step up here. Lots of tricks on and off. Off the cabin. Into the snail berm. Coming around into the final feature. On the last step up. Into the whale tail. Boom. Last feature right into the village. Stoked. Our next rider is the Frenchman, Thomas Lemoyne. And Louis Rebold, a fellow French rider, just 22 years of age, dropped in on his first run of two. And I don't know what it is, Cam, but the French are bringing so many talented riders over. Yeah, no shortage of talent out in France. There's also a Crankworx event out there. You see those guys really shine on their hometown course. They come in Whistler, and you know they're swinging. Look at Rebold here with the opposite 360 up onto the cabin. That's where stuff got a little bit fishy for him. You put a foot down, and you know, with how high the riding level is right now, those judges are really critical if you take a foot off. 46.20 for Louis Rebol, so he'll look to his second run to improve as we go back to the top of this beautiful course. There is Lamont, just 18 years of age from Marseille, France. Seems like he's been around the sport a lot longer than that. Yeah, I can't believe he's actually still so young. He's a very accomplished rider, really well-rounded. You'll see him out at Crankworks riding the pump track, a bunch of different other events, but this is his main show right here, the slopes out, and he's looking to make his mark. So the score to beat is a 68.60. We're in the first round of two, and Lamont now dropping in. So Lamont Lemoyne starting out with a 360 off the start tower, straight into a 360 table, adding in that style points, laying the bike flat while rotating a 360. A backflip, tail whip, dropping one foot, but still carrying that speed into the four-pack section with a bar spin out of the wall ride. And Cam, the conditions look perfect. Tina Dixon talked about the rain that they received earlier. That's got to be great for traction and improvement for the riders. Too wet is not great, but too dry is also pretty difficult as well. So you have a nice, happy medium right now. The riders are loving the course. You can see Tomas Lemoyne with that tuck no handed a bar spin on the cannon, doing a difficult combination trick on a difficult obstacle, definitely what the judges are looking for. Ooh, a cannonball going up on top of the cabin. A 360X up. X up in that difficult turnaround feature there. You see it's a full 270 degree berm. Tuck no hander into the whale tail. And a 360 bar spin down. Super solid run for Tomas Lemoyne. So the Frenchman from start to finish very solid as the nearly 25,000 fans here at Whistler look on. Let's go back and look at some of the highlights of this run because there were plenty. He made use of every single feature. Well, for me, Todd, it was all about the variety in this run. And the execution right here, the backflip tail up, this is the one spot where he had a little bit of a falter in that execution with a foot coming off. But everything else was right on point. A 360 tuck no hander starting out that four pack. This is where you put the punctuation mark on your run here, the final feature. You want to end with an exclamation point, and doing a 360 variation like that 360 bar spin is the way to do it. And the score coming down for Lemoyne, and it is going to be a good one in 81.20. So Thomas Lemoyne of France goes into the lead, surpassing the mark to beat by Watts, which was a 68.60. And we have ourselves a new leader. That's got to feel good. Being such a young guy out here in front of all these people, posting the top score so far, it's going to be hard to defend that with all these riders we've got coming up. But let's see what happens. So great first run for Tomas, something we haven't seen a lot of, and that is unnatural direction spins. And Cam, you had a chance earlier in the week to wander around Whistler Village and show the average people just how challenging these opposite tricks can be. So here we are, middle of Whistler Village, in the middle of the week during the Crankworks Festival. All these people, they're all gonna migrate up to the Boneyard Slopes out. The course is full of features this year, and to put together a run that's balanced, the riders are doing a lot of opposite tricks. So we're gonna cruise around the village right now, talk to people, and explain to them in some creative ways why opposite matters to the judges up here for the Slopes Out Contest. Let's go. The park seems like the perfect place to find some people doing some sports. Don't want to interrupt your, oh, thank you. How's it going, guys? Which hand do you usually prefer to drive nails with? Right. You throw with your right hand. Whoa! Have you ever tried switching things up, throwing with your unnatural hand? See if you can make your name look close enough to your signature on the back of the card here to where your waitress will accept it. Could you kind of try to do this exactly what you did right there? Yeah. The opposite direction? Absolutely. All right, cool. Let's see what you got. You sound pretty confident. Whoa! Whoa. Sorry! Yeah, you didn't understand what I was, I'm sorry about that. This is gonna be a little bit more difficult to describe than I thought. What I meant was, 
This is your natural way. You're a right-handed golfer, correct? Yeah. So what I want to see you do is just the most unnatural, uncomfortable thing ever. Go opposite, go switch. Stand this okay. way and do it like a lefty would. Feels pretty awkward. OK, I'm going to step back a little bit. <laughs> Here we go. Whoa! See how many hits it takes you to get to the tutorial center of this tutorial pop. Nice one. 134, wow. It is way harder. Let's give it a shot. There you go, that's great. Get the waitress over here. Uh, I may have to see an ID. Doing a trick your natural direction is just instinctual. To rewire your brain and go against all of that instinctual feeling is really difficult to do. It can take years and years and years to even just complete a rotation your unnatural way, and then to fine tune that and make it look regular and have some style into it can truly take a whole career. Thanks for being a part of our experiment today. For sure. Thanks for sharing your athletic prowess with us today. See you around. Thanks, Cam. It's nice to see it explained to us mere mortals. Some of these athletes make it look so easy, it's hard to tell. While we were away, Sam Reynolds out of Great Britain, this young man went large. Well, I love the way Sam approached this run right here. He had a bit of a freestyle motocross interpretation of the course with that backflip Indian air. Then my favorite part right here, this no foot can, no hander, not even touching the bike, standing alongside of it. Such great extension. Put on a great show in run number one. His score came down as a 74.80. Remember, two runs score, and we only keep your best. As we move back to the top of the course, this is 28-year-old Yannick Granieri, young man out of France. We talk about the French invasion. They continue to bring talent over here to North America. Well, Yannick Granieri kind of on the older side of the spectrum for the rider field here today. He's got kind of a new found focus. He's wearing that chest protector. He's got new tricks, been practicing with the airbag. Let's see what he's got. Score to beat is an 81.20. Starting out with a 360 off the drop, a tail up off the up box. And here's that trick he's been working on, that cork 720 on that step up. Damn, you talk about the progression of this sport, and this is just another step. There we go, backflip tail up on the first jump on the four pack. What can he link it to? A backflip Superman seat grab Indian air. We talked about the freestyle motocross vibe of Sam Reynolds' run. It looks like it's bleeding over into Yannick's run here. Tuck no hander on that cannon feature. Oh, that's a classic Yannick Grenieri move there, that flat spin 360 X up. Now things get serious, into the cabin, back flip up, a tail whip down. Here we go, the crowd's cheering him on into this final feature, the whale tail. Bar spin in, what's he got to finish off this run? A 360 bar spin, oh, he's going for the bars. Oh, thank goodness he's wearing that chest protector. And Granieri goes down hard. That looked like it could have been a leading run until the very end, and it all went south. Yeah, we talk about that last feature being so important. You need to put the exclamation point at the end of the run. He had a great middle with that backflip Superman seat grab Indian air. He wanted to finish it off strong, getting pedals in the middle of that feature. 360 bar spin, but he never got the bar straight. He didn't get his hands on the bars, and he need those hands on those grips to be able to ride down into the finish corral the very best in the business, and unfortunately, Cam, they know how to fall the very best. Well, he did all the hard stuff in that run. He just needed to finish it off, so, you know, he's going to be looking to repeat all the stuff at the top in his second run, but then just put that exclamation point there at the bottom. Good to see Yannick up and riding high fives for the fans. 50.40, so he will look to run number two. Let's send it over to Sal Masakela. As we talked about earlier, the dominating conversation at this year's competition is Brett versus Brandon might be an advantage to some of the other riders because they get to avoid the spotlight and the pressure. However, if you're roommates with one of these guys, specifically Brandon Semenuk, you might not be able to dodge the attention. Logan Pete is both a friend and training partner to Brandon Semenuk and has been trying to make his mark on the scene and make a name for himself all on his own outside of a superstar roomie. To get back to kind of the level I am today, like, I, I honestly didn't really believe I could do it. First time I met Logan Pete, he was on the podium with me at Highlands Mountain Bike Park. He was on his way to being the best in the world. And then next event, the next weekend, he dropped in, flipped the last jump, put his foot down funny, and he broke his leg right there. Came right out of the skin, so I had the kind of dangling foot thing going on. And then he was just like, you know, he's gone from the scene just like that. The things that he had to go through mentally just to come back and compete with these guys that have three years more experience. Obviously a really patient person. A Couple years go by, I kind of just threw it out. I'm like, hey, do you want to move in? 
moved in like right away. That's when I really started hanging out with Logan. As soon as he got back on his bike, he's like, he had never forgot how to ride a bike. He was so good. He could do anything he wants if he tries hard. Yeah, this is my house. We got target practice. Let me go downstairs. This is where Logan and NT uh, live. LP's room in here. <laughs> it's been good. He's actually like a pretty good roommate. I'm on GV. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little messy here and there, but you know, I'll give it to him. Me and Brandon have became really good friends. You know, those kind of things just bring you tight and you got each other's backs and help each other grow as a rider. I think going into Joyride, this is Logan's event to get on the podium, for sure. Last year, he was one spot off. In the last couple of events, he's been so close. To see Logan on the podium at Joyride will be huge for him. Oh, man, so good to see Logan Peak back on his game. I'm just glad that his riding is cleaner than his room. <laughs> Tomas Lemoyne is your leader, 81.20, as Logan Peak, the 25-year-old from the Sunshine Coast of British Columbia, gets set to drop in. And Cam, you've had this happen before, coming back from a serious injury. Mentally, it's got to play with you a little bit. And Logan's injury was so serious. I yeah. remember seeing that bone sticking out, uh, thinking, is this kid ever going to be able to get back on his game? But he's so patient. He has such great composure. His personality shows in his riding style. So he finished fourth last year, looking to get on the podium with a very talented field that will be pushing him. And Logan Pete now on course on run number one. Logan Pete, such a technical rider, starting out with a regular 360, right into the opposite 360, now the regular 720 on that step up. So far, spinning so many degrees on so few features. Looks like we got a backflip on the first jump of the four pack, and a tuck no hander to tail up on the second, getting the combination move. Here we go. See if he can trick these difficult features. Got that cannon with a 360. Now a backflip tail lift on the hip. Doing a trick you'd normally see on one of the straight jumps on a hip. Judges love it. A backflip tuck no hander on top of the cabin. An opposite 360 down. Huge points for spinning your unnatural direction on a step down. One more feature to go for Logan Pete. What has he got on this last feature? A backflip top no hander. There we go. That's what the judges want to see. The rotation with some limbs being thrown off the bike. And the question is, will it be enough to move into first? 81-20 is the mark to beat. Let's look back at this 720. Lands so smooth. I just love how he's not jerking the rotation. It's just smooth spins all the way around, like that tuck no hander to tail up right there, gaining the combo. So he had spins different directions. He had difficult combos on difficult obstacles. And there we go, finishing things off with the one-footed X up into the whale tail and a back flip tuck no hander. By the time you get to the end of the course, you're so tired. To be able to do that variation is way difficult, but it's definitely rewarded when the judges put their pens to the paper. So Logan Pete, man who finished in fourth last year, looking to get on the podium this year. As his score comes down on run number one, it's at 85, and Logan Pete will go into first place. Wow, that is so good to see. He's been working so hard to get here, and seeing that number one next to his name is amazing. So Logan Pete is the new leader, and he's with Tina Dixon. And Logan is our current leader. Logan, give us your assessment of what you were able to do on that first run. Yeah, I was pretty happy. Um, Missed a few things, but uh, you got a second run. It's awesome to get at the bottom in one piece, and can't wait to get up there. What was, you live with Brandon, you train with Brandon. What was it like for you guys leading up to this event? Yeah, lots of practice. You know, we knew about the course months in advance, so you can kind of plan your tricks on the features and just basically hard work. All right, well, you got another run. Best of luck, guys. All right, thank you, Tina and Logan. Pete, now the leader. We're still in run number one of two. 85 becomes the mark to beat. And Nikolai Rogotkin of the USA out of Lincoln, Mass, set to drop in. So this has got to be tough, Cam. You just saw a guy light up the course, do a fantastic job. Definitely a favorite here in Canada. And now Rogotkin, the 19-year-old, has to try to go and match it. Well, this is when stuff really starts to heat up. This kid's got such an amazing story to his career. Starting out in BMX, there we go. A fast plant 360 off that step down. That's a new one for him. A double whip on that up box. Oh, a front flip bar spin on the step up. He's pulling out all the stops in run one. A lot of speed for Rogatkin. Bar spin out of the wall. What's he got on the four pack? This is what he loves. There we go, the Cork 720. Can he link it? Oh, he's linking it to the cash roll. Mm. Another 720 degree rotation, just on a slightly different axis. Oh, it looks like something's wrong. Oh, no. Not able to get the speed. I don't know, maybe 
a flat tire or something. When he came out of that berm, he just started losing speed so quickly and didn't have enough speed to get from the takeoff to the landing on that cannon feature. And he was absolutely flying through this course until that point. Let's look at this again. So he's got such a deep bag of tricks and tricks that nobody else is doing. So we saw that front flip bar spin. Very few people are doing that. And what nobody's doing is linking a Cork 720 to a cash roll. Watch this trick. It is a 720 degree rotation, but it's on a forwardly spinning axis. It's essentially a front flip 360 and linking it right after the back flip 360. Nobody's doing that. So there it is right here. This is where the run came to a screeching halt. It looks like a flat rear tire took all this speed away. And he's going to have to get back up to the top of the course and try it again for run two. So repairs underway for Nikolai Rogatkin. Unfortunately, his score is not going to be something he's going to keep. A 31 is what the judges give him. And there he shows exactly what went wrong. Cam McCall, you were dead on, completely flat on that back wheel. He's such a showman. You know he wants to finish that run. So luckily, he's got another chance. Thomas Janone of Belgium dropped in, and the 21-year-old who is known for some amazing tricks had a pretty solid run. Another past champion out here. He's done it before. He started out that run with an opposite 360. No, and that's what the judges want to see into that regular 360 bar spin, getting that variety and execution tally up. 360 tuck no hander off the cannon. One thing about this guy is just his fluidity. He is so smooth. When he won in 2012, he made it look so incredibly easy in a year when everybody was falling. He finished this run off strong with a 360. It looked like he wanted a variation there, so he'll be back up there, try to just iron out the kinks and do an even better run in run two. The man they call Tommy G picks up a 71.80, and he will look to run number two. Well, this next rider has taken gold at Joyride three of the last four years, but in 2015, he has yet to stand on top of a single podium. To learn more about him and the man who has been taking those top spots, let's send it over to Sal Masakela. Thank you, Todd. Brett versus Brandon, Brandon versus Brett, Brett versus the entire field. It has been the topic of conversation all year long, and there's no denying this buzz that's surrounding the newly formed Triple Crown of Slope Style. But no one really expected a competitor to be in the running for it in its inaugural year. Brett Reeder dominating at both Rotorua and Les Du Alps, and whether he likes it or not, all eyes are on him to attempt this sweep for 2015. But one man, Brandon Seminuk, stands between him and that history-making event. The Whistler native would like to make his own history by capturing a record fourth win in front of his hometown crowd. I ended up doing the drive east to Highland Mountain Bike Park, which is in Tilton, New Hampshire. It's not that far of a drive. My season started in Rotorua, New Zealand. Brett Reader, run number one. With this win, he is your triple crown leader. The second stop of the Crankworks Tour brought us to the French Alps. And when it came to the end of the day, I ended up in first place again. Somehow, I've managed to put myself in this position where if I win Joyride, I win the triple crown. So I'm working hard. When I prepare for an event, I don't really do anything crazy. Lots of riding involved, lots of repetition, doing the exact same trick over and over and over again until it's pressed into your brain. I can't believe I've won two crank works this year. Everyone's talking about it. Is he going to get it? Is he not going to get it? Is he going to be able to beat Semenuk? Is Semenuk going to be able to beat him? Oh. Brandon Seminuk on the left, Brett Reeder on the right. Brandon Seminuk still leads. Well, Brett has done his part and moved into first. We'll see if Brandon Seminuk can answer that. 2015 has definitely been an interesting year. The first event, I had a pretty big crash. Second event, I just wasn't riding like I normally ride. Just barely holding on. It's a different year when I don't have a good result yet. Contests have been my focus for a really long time now, but this year I've sort of shifted my focus to making a film with my good friend, Rupert Walker, called Revel in the Chaos. Brandon's a really creative person on and off the bike. It's definitely a different process. Practice for a contest, you do all your tricks, and you just get super dialed, and it's just repeat, repeat, repeat. But you go filming, and it's like you spend a lot of time just getting things prepared. Brandon has actually taken on more of like a producer role. You don't really ride your bike a ton, but you're also trying to do something fresh. Maybe it's never been done before. You like that? I like that. If people think this project has been a distraction for him, I think that they're wrong. I think the film's helped him out because he is able to think about new tricks that he wants to do, and then he can take that idea away and get it ready for competition. So definitely going to Joyride, I'm really motivated to do well this time. Like actually try and finish my slopes all year with a run I'm really happy about. 
Wow, more so this year than any other year in the history of this sport. The drama coming into this event here at Whistler is absolutely insane. Brett Reeder trying to win that triple crown, but Brandon Semnick trying to win it for his fourth time. He just put out this movie part that blew minds. It cranked the level of progression of this sport times 10. Everybody knows what he has in his bag. It's just a question of what is he going to choose to put into this run. So here we go, Brandon Semenuk. The score to beat is an 85 put up by his roommate, Logan Pete. Now, the question is, they've worked together so long. Does Brandon hold back maybe just a little something, doesn't share everything with his roommate? No, I think the only person in the world who knows what this run is going to look like is Logan Pete. What's it going to be? Brandon Semenuk starting out this run with an opposite rotating 360 bar spin. There we go, a 360 downside tail up, a normal spin and opposite whip, a backflip double tail up. Hard to even say these tricks, nonetheless do. A bar spin out of this curve wall ride. What's he got in the four pack? Cork 720. Second jump in the four pack, a backflip tail up to one footed wow. can. A ridiculous combo that nobody's done in a contest before. So here are these tricks coming directly from that movie part. A backflip bar spin on a cannon. Once again, never been done in a contest. Getting a nice smooth double whip on that hip. Into the, oh, the cabin feature. He's starting out with a 360 double bar spin, a flat drop flip coming off. One this more is, feature. This is a classic Brandon Semenuk run. How will he finish it? Opposite bar spin in, a quick 720 down. Oh man, the crowd is going nuts, Todd. And they should be as the quest for the four P is on. Brandon Semenuk with an unbelievable run. Logan Pete there to congratulate him. Cam, that was ridiculous good. The consistency of this guy is ridiculous. To do all of those tricks with that high level of difficulty, but do them all in a row. Here we go, we got this regular spin with an opposite whip. It's a 360 downside tail whip. Coming right into this step up. Backflip, not just one tail whip, two tail whips with that backflip double whip. And here it is, this is just, I mean, everybody in this field watches this guy and trains based off of what he's doing. But he comes in with tricks that nobody else even knows he has until he put out his movie part, that backflip tail to one-footed can. And here it is, people are doing flip variations off of cannon features now, so difficult. The 360, not just one bar spin, two bar spins. He's always a step ahead. And that flat drop backflip, and here's where he really put that exclamation point on. This is how he won it last year. A cork 720 on a step down. Last year was the first time anybody did that in a slope style contest. That's the second right there. People haven't even caught up to that in a whole year's time. So the reigning champion throws down on run number one of two. And what do the judges give him? Oh, this is going to be huge. A 93.80. Brandon Semenuk goes into the lead. So the defending champion is on track. One run complete, one more still to go, and Tina Dixon is now with him. What a statement, Brandon, you just made with that first run. Give us your impression of it. Oh, thanks. That was, uh, I'm just so happy I made it to the bottom. I just want to run because uh, the last couple of contests have been struggling, but that was pretty good, and hopefully uh, it'll hold up, and I got another run. Pretty good, it was a 93, and you have the support of the crowd. Do you feel like you have a home turf advantage here in Whistler? Uh, I got lots of fans behind me, which is great, but besides that, I'm just doing what everyone else is doing, trying my best. Focusing on the job, best of luck next run, guys. Very casual to the tune of 93.80, but if there's one man here that can top it, it's our next competitor, Brett Reeder. And as Brandon Semenuk was talking to Tina Dixon, you can sense he knows there's one more top dog to drop in, and here he is. And a top dog who's been on fire all year. Two yep. huge wins under his belt. A lot of chatter's been going on this week. Who's got more pressure on their shoulders? Brett Reeder, man, trying to get this triple crown. That's a lot of pressure. There we go, starting out strong with a new move for him. The flat drop back with one footed can. And then a move he had last year. Oh, wow, this is reminiscent of last year. The 360 bar spin, a bar spin back off the up off and the front foot bar on the step up. Cruising things into the four pack. What's he got? A backflip double tail. Oh! Wow. He knows exactly what he needs to try to beat Brandon on this course. That's a trick that Brandon used last year, but he's trying to do it on a bigger jump, and it just didn't go well. All right, let's take a look back at this replay. That's a trick that Brandon used last year to win a backflip. One footed can off the flat drop, and this is what Brett used last year. 360, that's an opposite 360 bar spin to bar spin back, fitting so many tricks in one move, and a front flip bar spin. We saw Nikolai Rogatkin doing that. Brett Reeder's got that as well. 
and going for that backflip double tail up on a bigger jump than what Brandon did it on, but just not really having the speed to get to the landing. Here we go, we see he's not on the bike yet, but he's so close to that pile of dirt and he knew right there that the run was over. Thank goodness there's run two still in store for him. So Brett Reeder, who finished second last year, gets a 36-60 on run number one, gives a little love to the locals here at Whistler, all 25,000 of them. But run number one has come to a conclusion. Brandon Seminook, the defending champion, is on top with a big score, a 93.80. Logan Pete sits in second, Thomas Lemoyne in third. Top placed American right now is Greg Watts, currently sitting in sixth. Well, there you go. You see the local boys, Brandon and Logan, sitting in the top two spots, holding it down for Canada. But man, people are going to come out swinging that second run. All right, Tina Dixon's with Brett Reeder. And I think it says a lot about Brett Reeder, Brett, that you picked yourself up and finished your run. What were you telling yourself right after that fall? Uh, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't fallen all season, so it was about time, I guess. Um, it just sucks that it was my first uh, run at Red Bull Joyride. And you're coming into this event, though, after two wins. You know what it takes. You have the experience. So what's key for you as an athlete to go back up and refocus for the second run? I don't know. There's a couple spots on the course that are a little hard to judge speed, so um, yeah, I don't know. I just got to get a little more speed out of that SRAM wall. Well, you've got one more run. Best of luck, Brett. Guys? All right, thank you, Tina. And Cam, Brett seems a little despondent over that last crash. Well, with so much on the line and the fact that he's done his homework, he has so many new tricks to put into this run. It's daunting, but luckily he has another chance. He wishes he could have done it in the first one, but we'll see what he has for second run. All right, we are set to go. Run number two, Nikolai Rogatkin, the young American, set to drop in. Had problems. Remember, he had the flat halfway through his first run, so here's a guy just itching to get back out on course. But before that flat tire, Todd, that run was yeah. completely off the hook. Let's see if he can pull a full pull. There we go. That fast plant 360 off the start drop, a new trick for him. The double tail once again off the up box. The front flip barsman, he's truly a machine. He trains as if this was a mainstream sport. He's like an Olympian out there. There we go. The court 720 on the first one. Can he get this cash roll again? Oh, he's got it. Mm. And even smoother than the last time, so no flat tire here. We may see a full pull from Nikolai if he can hold it together. 93.80 oh! is the mark to beat. Ragotkin's got a good one going. Oh, man, a triple tail up on that transfer. And it was a tail to Barsman off the cannon. Front clip, top no hander, comboing up the box. A tail whip down. Oh, man, if he can get a trick off of this step down and do a full pull. Here we go, into the whale tail. Top no hander in. And a backflip out for Nikolai Rogatkin, top to bottom. Can he ever fill that with a lot of tricks? Just 19 years of age, Nikolai Rogatkin. What an amazing run. He had so much pressure after having that flat. It all came down to this final run. Well, we talk about doing homework, and Nikolai's a guy who's got so many tricks, but he got a new one here for this event, the Fast Plant 360 off that drop. Then a Nikolai Rogatkin classic, the double tail up on a difficult feature. Rolling right in to this front flip bar spin, making such a difficult combo look casual and smooth. But here's my favorite part of the run, the way he links this cork 720, the back flip 360 into this cash roll once again. And in his first run, he kind of landed a little bit sideways, and I think that's what caused his rear tire to roll off the rim. This time, he landed even smoother, and he was able to link it into a trick that I have never seen done in a slope style contest off of a cannon, a tail up to bar spin, squeaking that bar spin in on the last half second of airtime before he touched the landing. And I thought he was going for two. He went for three tail whips on that transfer. And he finished things off with a nice, smooth backflip. We would have liked to see a variation in there, but after he just filled all those tricks up on that course, he was just trying to get down to the finish. So the judges now deliberate, and a score coming in for Nikolai Rogatkin. And it is going to be a good one, a 90.40. Nikolai Rogatkin goes into second. So a tremendous performance by the young man. He's now with Tina Dixon. Nikolai, you just jumped from 17th to second. How redeeming is that run? It was stacked full of difficulty. Oh, I no idea how nervous I was up there, you know, messing up the first run because of the flat and uh, having to do that cash roll once again. But uh, the support of Whistler, you know, I had to send it and uh, got it done. So couldn't be, couldn't feel better. So stoked. Everyone down here was biting their nails as you finished off with that well tell. What were you telling yourself there? 
Oh, probably the uh, scariest backflip I've ever done, you know, just please trying to hang on and, uh, you know, rolling through this finish corral, no better feeling. Well, what a great second run, guys. All right, thanks, Tina Camp. That was a fantastic run. Well, you heard it from Nikolai. He was saying, you know, I'm in Whistler. I just got to send it. The thing I always think about is how do you remember all those tricks? And, you know, after you get them all, you, you're going to throw it all away if you mess it up on the last jump. So he just put a stamp on it, finished it, got a score in the bag. All right, before we move on, let's check in with Sal. Thank you, Todd. You guys think that Brett Reeder can win the first ever Triple Crown of Slope Style? What about Brandon Semina? He looks good for a record fourth joyride. Either way, there are 10 days of mountain bike culture to celebrate here, so why don't you guys get involved in the conversation? Follow the Red Bull Signature Series on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can go to RedBullSignatureSeries.com where we have even more exclusive Crankworks content just for you. Plus, you can download the Red Bull TV app to watch this show and catch up on every episode from all seasons. You're welcome. This is Joyride at Crankworks Whistler and our current leader, Brandon Seminar. A 93.80 is the mark to beat as Brett Reeder gets set for run number two. A lot of pressure mounting here at Whistler. Everyone wanting to knock off the king. For more on pressure, let's check in with Tina Dixon. Well, guys, I'm now joined by Martin Soderstrom, someone who knows a thing or two about pressure heading into that second run. What is going to be key for these riders? Wow, yeah, it's a lot going on at the moment inside of your head. I mean, first of all, you're obviously scared. I mean, you know that it's a dangerous sport. Just for me, I know 2013, I was standing up there, had a really good first run, but also knew I had to step it up to beat Brandon. And I did everything I had, and uh, on the last last feature, I broke my tib fib and was out, out for nine months. So, uh, I mean, that's how, yeah, how small it could be from, like, either perfect or you're gone for nine months. So, I mean, that's the scary part about this sport. It's, it's a fine line. What do you think someone like Brett will do after having had that first fall? Will he stick with the same conservative run, or do you think he'll just throw it all out on the table? That's a good question. That guy never stopped to surprise, so uh, I'm pretty sure he's just going to go for it. I mean, he, he's not going to settle for a second, I think. He's, he really want to beat Brandon, and I mean, it's the triple crown on, on the table, so I think he's just going to go out there, try to forget about the crash, and then just, just try to beat ben, Brandon. Thanks so much for speaking with us. Some words of wisdom by Martin Soderstrom, guys. We'll send it back to you. And Martin unable to compete because of injury, Cam. He's dead on. The pressure really now is on Brett Reeder as he tries for the first triple crown to sweep the whole thing. Well, trying to beat Brandon Semenuk on a slope style course can be a very dangerous activity. Many people have broken bones trying to do it. Right now, this guy, Brett Reeder, knows how to do it. He's done it twice this year, but here on this stage, this is where it matters most. He is sitting on a 36.60. That does him no good in our two-run format. We only keep your best score, the mark to beat, 93.80. It's now or never for Brett Reeder. Back flip, one-footed can off that flat start drop. Opposite 360 bar spin or bar spin back. There's that really boosty front flip bar spin. And here we go. Here's where things went awry for Reeder last run. The back flip double tail. Can he get it? He gets it. What's he got on the second? Oh, no. Oh, man. I think his foot slipped off right before the takeoff to that second jump in the four pack. That's it for Brett Reeder. Wow. So much pressure building. So much on the line. He got that trick that he couldn't land in the first mm. run, that backflip double tail up. But right here, you see his foot slip off, all the compression coming into that lip, and maybe oh. his foot was a little bit on the toes or something. It slipped off. Right there. Oh, and his yep. hopes that the triple crown just came to a screeching halt. Unfortunate for Brett Reeder, and he is disappointed. His day is done. The 39 does him no good. The good news, though, Cam, is he does get the overall title for the year. What a season for this guy. It would have been the, uh, the amazing cap off to a great season if he would have won the Triple Crown, but he still took the overall, the Crankwork Slope Style World Tour. Louis Rabol now set to drop in on his second run. His first run score was a 46-2-0, so a lot of work for him as he tries to re-energize the 25,000 fans here at Whistler after Reader's fall. Well, Louis Rabol, another one of these French riders, they're coming out in numbers this year. Such a great scene bustling in France. There we go, the tuck no hander off that up box. 360 tail with feet right to the pedals, getting those execution points. 
Here we go. A toboggan putting the hand on the seat out of that curved wall ride and a classic Louis Ribol flat spin 360 on the first jump of the four pack. Wow, there's the combo right there. Putting his hands on the seat, feet off, and then linking it to a top no hander. And a new one for Louis Ribol, flipping the cannon log. Really hard to do it on that feature because it doesn't have a ramp. It's a flat takeoff. Really got to get behind the bike. Onto the cabin and opposite 360, keeping his feet on the pedals this time, smoothing it out from his last run. So opposite 360 up, regular 360 down, balancing out the tricks in this run for Louis Rabol. Tuck no hander into the whale tail and a backflip table out. Ah, oh, smooth land on the last feature for Louis Rabol. Well, this will be a big improvement. Remember, his first run score was a 46.20. The mark to beat is a 93.80 see exactly what the judges thought of this his second and final run there we go there's that classic louis Rabol style he's got such nice 360s and it is all about the style out here in slope style it's not just a trick it's how you make it look and a combo like that looks great the cannonball to tuck no hander he goes opposite 360 on top of the cabin and lands it really smooth this time and balances out the run by spinning regular off of it And the score coming in for Louis Rabol. His day is done. And the score is going to be impressive at a 74.40. So he jumps up into sixth place for the Frenchman. Well, the French riders showed him they got what it takes to compete out here at Slope Style Super Bowl. Yannick Granieri of France, the 28-year-old who was sitting on a 50.40 from run number one, up the mark considerably. Well, he's coming in with a new focus this year. Something has clicked with this guy, and he's got new tricks. And at 28, you don't usually see people coming in with new tricks. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, this <laughs> old dog's got it figured out. At 28 years young, Granieri came in on his second run, and he picked up a much better score, a 76.80. Greg Watts also set to drop in now on run number two. His first run score was a 68.60. Well, the former champion did what he does best, those difficult combinations utilizing that front break. Not many athletes running that front break. And he put down another smooth run, two in the bag for Greg Watts. Unfortunate does not improve on run number two, so he sticks with a 68.60. All right, so Brandon Semenuk is your leader with a 93.80. Logan Pete currently sits in third, and that's a very precarious position, Cam, on the podium, but a lot of talent still to come. Logan Pete scores an 85 even. Logan Pete sitting in that third spot. You know, if he could hang on to a podium, that would just be the ultimate culmination of his recovery story. Tommy G, Tommy Janone out of Belgium, set to drop in. Now, his first run score was good, 71.80, but he is capable of so much more. Thomas Janon is one of those guys who just makes it look so incredibly easy. He won in 2012. He wants to do it again. He definitely has what it takes. Going opposite 360 on that start drop, and then regular 360 on the up box, and then cork 720 on the step up. Now he gets a tuck no hander out of that curved wall ride. Here's where stuff gets serious. A backflip barfin. Looks like he got the tuck no hander there to link the combo. Oh, and a classic 360 inverted tabletop. So the man who won it all in 2012 is getting close to the bottom. Does he have enough? 360 tuck no hander on the cannon log. A double whip transfer on the hip. And look at this. When he lands, his head does not bob. He is so composed. Makes it look easy. Suicide no hander up. Flat drop flip. He's got that one this year. One more feature, the mark to beat is a 93.80. We come sprinting into that whale tail with a tail whip in and a 360 bar spin to take the pop down. Smooth run for Thomas Janon. So the 21-year-old from Belgium gets a great second run, but will it be enough to knock off the king? Remember, 93.80 is a big score. Well, Thomas Janon just oozes style, and he makes these opposite tricks just look, they look natural, they look regular. The judges love that. They want to have to think whether it's a opposite or a regular. Thomas Janon bringing it back to the old school with a suicide no-hander, and then going new school with that flat drop backflip off the cabin. Now, none of that matters unless you put the nail in the coffin on the last feature. He had the tail up in, which is one of the more difficult tricks you'll see into that whale tail feature. And then, get, wow, he fumbled the bars a little bit there with a 360 bar spin. You can't even tell in full speed. You can only tell in slow-mo. He's so smooth. So Tommy G's day is done. He now waits for the score to come down. 93.80 may be a bit much for him, but he comes in with an 88. <laughs> So Janone is now on the podium here at Joyride. Oh, man, it's been a while since he stood on that podium. 
three years. He wants to get back up there. Now remember, Kamakal, the mark to beat is a 93.80, and no one has left. Everyone's sticking around to see what happens. Sam Reynolds sitting on a 74.80. Well, Sam Reynolds, he's trying to get up to the top of that mountain that Brandon's standing on, saying, hey, guys, can you climb this thing, too? He's got the backflip tail from the first jump on the four-pack, and then that classic no foot it can no hander with that freestyle motocross influence. I love how he's kind of taking inspiration from other sports and putting it on this slopestyle course. Backflip up, 360 down. Down on the cabin and then on the whale tail finishing things off with tuck no hander up and a nice slow backflip tuck no hander with great extension getting that flip variation on the final feature is what the judges love the 24 year old lad from great britain would get an 83.60 on run number two how about Thomas Lemoyne of France? The 18-year-old out of Marseille was sitting on an 81.20 when he dropped for run number two. Well, he may be a young gun, but he's got so much experience in riding for so long, getting that 720 with the invert, going upside down and getting the style in there with the tabletop. So many flip combos there. And then onto that cabin with that cannonball, taking everything off the bike, grabbing the seat. And 360X up off of that cabin. This kid's got such a huge future in the sport, it's kind of crazy to think that he's only 18 right now. He picks up an 86.60, so Tomas Lemoyne moves into fourth place. Back to action here at Whistler. Logan Pete set to drop in, just 25 years of age, trying to de dethrone that man, Brandon Semenuk, who has a 93.80. It all comes down to this. Logan Pete gets a 93.80 or better, and Brandon Semenuk has to take his final run. If he doesn't, Brandon Semenuk gets the victory lap. Well, it's an interesting scenario, too, because Logan Pete's sitting up there. He's like the only guy in the world who knows what else Brandon Semenuk has planned for his second run if he has to do it. So he knows what he has to do to ultimately beat him if he can post a top score beating Brandon's first run score. So his buddy sends him off, Brandon Semenuk, with some well wishes. And we are set to go. Logan Pete, it's all or nothing time. There we go. Logan Pete with a 360 off the start drop. The opposite 360 X up on the up box. And that smooth 720. This time connecting perfect to the landing. He had a little bit of a case last time. This time, not the case. Here we go. Taking a lot of speed into that four pack there with the back foot bar spin. Oh, he wanted that combo that he had in the first run. He had that tuck no hander to tail up. But man, getting those combos are so tough because you don't get the first one on the six and he's not going to help you. Very well, the train fell off the tracks, a couple obstacles ahead, and then not having speed for the 360 on that cannon. That'll be hit for Logan Pete. And with Logan Pete coming unglued from the bike, that means that Brandon Semenuk is your winner. The 93.80 stands the test of time. The first person to ever win this event four times. Man, oh man, they, we call it the Super Bowl of slope style, and they actually give away Super Bowl style rings every time you win this contest. Brandon, he's got four of them now. You know, hopefully we see him back next year to try to fill that entire hand. This is what's great about this young man. He could just cruise to the bottom and say, I've already got the title, but he's going to come out and give the fans here, 25,000 fans, a little something to send them off with. Well, I can't wait to see what he chooses right here. It doesn't matter what the judges think. He's just going to put some style into this run. Brandon Semenuk has the best style in the game. He's got the tricks to win the contest, but boom. Look at that, 360 inverted table, completely upside down. I know everybody out there just loves watching him do a run for himself right now. Oh, he's buzzing inside that helmet, just having a blast with this victory lap. Back to the bar spin to tuck no hander. Tricks that anybody would be so pumped to get yeah. in their run. He's just doing it for giggles. Couple straight airs, put some style on this one, but the fans here knowing that this is it, this is the champion. A great opportunity to watch one of the very best in the business go to work. Oh, he's even up in his run right now. He did a flat drop flip on that in his first run. He did a flat drop flip one-footed can here. Oh, the last chance to celebrate a 360 bar spin off that final feature. Just going to show <laughs> how casual he is. And, you know, it wasn't easy. I know how hard he worked for this, but, man, does he ever make it look easy. And the boys are there to bring him home. Brandon Semenuk, a four-time champion of this prestigious event. People work their whole careers just to kind of get a taste of that podium, maybe win it just once. Four times, that's absolutely unheard of.
So the final standings look like this. Brandon Semenuk is your winner for the fourth time. Nikolai Rogotkin jumps all the way up into second. And Tomas Janon, with an impressive performance, ends up in third. Lemoyne in fourth. And Pete rounding out the top five. Well, so many good stories here. I mean, Thomas Janon getting back on that podium, that's huge for him. It's been three years. He's so consistent. We knew he could do it again. Logan Pete, it's not going to be his year to get on the podium. Can't wait to see him back next year. What a performance, though, by Brandon Semenuk. His first run is the winning run, and he's now with Tina. Brandon, it has not been the easiest year for you. You started out in Rotorua with that crash and then not getting the run that you wanted and laid is out. But to finish off this way with your fourth joyride win, what does this mean to you? Oh, it's like, like a complete redemption for the bad season I had at the start of the year. So, so happy. Yeah. When did you start to feel it on this course? When did things start to click? I honestly like felt really good in practice and I felt good in practice in all the other events too. It's just, I, I don't even know, I just, I needed that run. You needed that run, and how much did experience at uh, the other events, competing at all the other joy rides, pay off for you today? Uh, I don't think you can ever have too much experience here. It's just like so, so stressful, and so many people, and you just want to perform and put on a good show, so I think I've, I've done it before, but it's still hard every time. Well, you did it again today. Congratulations, guys. Thank you very much, Tina. Brandon Semenuk sends the fans home very happy. On a picture-perfect day in British Columbia, he reigns supreme for the fourth time. Last year, Brandon Semenuk became the first rider to take three wins at Joyride. Today, he shattered anyone's dreams of catching him. Reaching the podium for the seventh time and standing on top for a record fourth title. It was this Cork 720 off the whale tail step down that truly illustrates just how incredible his dominance is. A trick others are just starting to attempt on traditional jumps, Brandon threw one on one of the hardest features on the course. Dedication, focus, and a love for the sport has given someone not only a win here today, but the Red Bull signature moment. Congratulations to Brandon Semina. All right, Cam, your final thoughts on a dominating performance. Well, out of all the attributes you mentioned, Todd, love for the sport. I think that's the main one that's carried Brandon Semenuk to the top step of the podium a record four times. It's so tough to be consistent in this sport. And listening to his final interview with Tina, he even says, you know, he messed up two big runs this year, and he didn't know if he was going to be able to salvage the season, but he did where it counts the most out here in Whistler. So congratulations one more time to Brandon Semenuk, and we send it back to Sal. Thank you, Todd, and thanks to you guys at home hanging out with us here on Planet Good Times, that is Joyride Crankworks Whistler in British Columbia, Canada. Congrats to Brandon Semenuk repeating and capturing for the record fourth win, third consecutive and seventh podium finish here at Joyride. That is a title that only he can claim in pure domination. Also, congrats to Nikolai Rogatkin and Tomas Janan rounding out that podium, plus a shout to Canadian Brett Reader. He did not win the Triple Crown, but he does still walk away with the Crankworks World Tour Slope Style Championship, winning two of this year's three events. We'll see you next time.